Do you believe in miracles? We got Fizzle in the house. Fizzle, what what's up, Fizzle? good, man? Fizzle, glad to have you here. Let's go. This the South Harmon Podcast. Glad you here today. Hit that Patreon link if you here to stay. Dynasty best ball, that's my favorite way. 40 chess trade show, let's make a trade today or check a AMA. You know Adam at the ATM. Mike always in the building, he gon' stay with him. They gon' start every show off with their own trade. Fantasy's a big ocean, they made their own wave. Make sure you tap in there Tuesdays and Saturdays. Tuesday night, Saturday morning, ain't no better way. Hit that notification bell when the news break. Go subscribe right now, don't get the news late. Destination Devi, that's the team. Dynasty football, man, that's my favorite thing. I remember Biggie said it was all a dream. Now people watching on their phones and computer screens. Welcome to the team. Welcome back in, everybody, to another edition of the Dynasty Trade Show. So glad you could join us. Y'all have been absolutely incredible over the last few weeks. The subscriber numbers keep going up. The amount of views keep going up. And the interaction, which I love, I absolutely love responding, even to the ones where you call me out for how stupid I am on the trades that I make. I absolutely love interacting with you. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of South Harmon. Thank you for tapping in. Adam, you're not in a hotel with shiny pinstripes. How you doing, buddy? How was your vacation? I'm doing great, man. Uh, vacation was good. Um, it's great. It's great to be back as always uh, with Mike and in the home studio recording the trade show, man. I'm excited for this one. Mike, let's go ahead. As Ray says, let's stop pussyfooting around. Let's go ahead and let's get right into the trades. Uh, if you do want your deals featured on this show, patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. Got two new patrons to get into their deals. But first, as Fizzle already told you, we start off with one of our own. Mike, let's start off with mine. Let's start off with mine. Let's see what we got. So, Mike, here's the thing. You're in this league, so you already know this trade went down. And I'm curious your thoughts on this one because you made a similar trade, but not as much capital went away to this player, Kyle Pitts. This is a 12-team Superflex PPR, tight end premium, start 13. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's 1.75. I, I, I can't remember specifically. This is the original, for those that don't know. This is the original shit league. This is before right. we had a YouTube channel and all that stuff. So, Mike, we're looking at Kyle Pitts um, being acquired for a 24 first, which is yours, um, a 24 second, which is Dynasty BAs, and Michael Mayer. To give a little context, let me at least preface this before I get your thoughts, Mike. Mike, this is a team that I have rebuilt since 2021. And I basically, how it worked, for those of you who want to know, I had a quarterback horde going in the startup. For six rounds in a row, all I took was QBs. Then when everybody had to come to me for quarterbacks, I liquidated them for picks. I basically controlled, I don't know, 80% or more of the draft the last two years. And I had a bunch of 2024 picks. Moral of the story is my team right now is so young built and I still control a bunch of the picks. So what I did was I kind of started seeing what I could move in 24 and 25 picks, keeping some liquidity, but also getting my team a little more ready to go on the contending side. So Mike, what's your thoughts on this deal? Best ball, start 13, tight end premium, PPR league. Kyle Pitts, is he worth Michael Mayer a 24 first and a 24 second? Um, given you know where your 24 first is going to land, what do you think? I love Kyle Pitts. I love him. Uh, this show loves Kyle Pitts. Adam, I think the question you have to ask yourself is, where do you think Kyle Pitts ends up? So where do you think he is? Because we have this fabulous new tool, thanks to now our partner. We can make it official on air, Koopa Troopa. Koopa is now a partner, a part of South Harmon, officially. In the Discord, you may have seen him. He's got the nice red tag, right? He's part of the shit commanders. But we made the website, SouthHarmonFF.com, the warp tool that we have. This depends on where you think Kyle Pitts is going to be, Adam. If he is just a tight end six, tight end seven, if that's what you can expect out of Kyle Pitts for the next two years, this is a no. horrible deal. Correct. I'd agree. You, I'd you agree. Got, you got bone. 
I've made the same deal though because I'm betting on Kyle Pitts being a tight end three. Mm-hmm. I'm not even saying he's got to be Travis Kelsey, right? Travis Kelsey's a, a damn unicorn as far as what he produces. He is a warp monster, right? Travis Kelsey is only surpassed in warp by a handful of people, and that's Patrick Mahomes, Justin Jefferson, and Josh Allen. Those Correct. are pretty good players to be in. Right? That's great company, no? This is, this is what's so beautiful about the warp tool is, Adam, I can go, I can put in my username, I can go right to this league Expl- with the scoring already imported, imported in, and it changes how the warp is based on the scoring. And I'm looking at it right now. Patrick Mahomes, Justin Jefferson, Josh Allen, end of list, Travis Kelsey's next. But if we go to tight end two, which happens to be TJ Hawkinson in this league, it's a little bit more dicey, but it's about the 30th player. Right. Give or take. And Mark Mark Andrews is right around that range. Um, George Kittle's not too far behind, right, as tight end four. So if you think Kyle Pitts can be in that range, which I do, uh, it's a good deal. It's something that I want to because it's a positional advantage, right? When you get down to, like, tight end six, tight end seven, while there's still positive warp, right? There's still decent enough players. It's, I mean, you're talking about a guy who's in the 50s. You're talking about a guy who's in the 60s, the 70s. Not that big of a deal because I can find a, you know, a, a Najee Harris, right? Nobody likes Najee Harris anymore. He's dead. He's, Who? he's over. He's an old. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's not a guy that's sexy. And if Najee Harris went for this prices, people go, who cares? No one cares. But it's the same warp wise. So, if you think Kyle Pitts can be there, like I do, uh, I like the deal. I think he can be a positional advantage. He can be a warp advantage at the position. So as much as I will tout Michael Mayer, I will tout Sam Laporta. That was a deal that I did uh, to get Kyle Pitts as well. We just changed up the the tight end position just a little bit. Um, I don't think I included my second. It might have been a third and, and some fab or whatever. So, so you was, had a uh, very was- similar deal. That's all we yeah, I, your, yours ended up being a first, I thought it was a second, maybe it was a third, you're right, and then the main, you, you ended up being a, a 9.99, so um, you, you did not right. send as I much away, yeah, you threw some fab away, you didn't send as much away, I'm 100% with you there, right. but um, the, the and, other thing, and it's a 14 team league with a lottery, so you have that whole dynamic that goes in, this is, is not a 14 team, obviously, 12 team. I will say this, Mayor, the 24 first, I know somebody in the Discord too was like, where's that Where's that 24 first projected? I said the 112 because it's my first. Yep. <laughs> I'm just because it's, it's probably going to be a late one though. I have a decent enough team. Right? Your, your team projects at year. least to be in the playoffs. And at that point, we're right. talking 107 to 112 depending on what happens and, in your team, right? And, and it's and it's it's a when Adam says it too, like this isn't to, to toot my own horn or anything like that, but this is a best ball team that I've also constructed where I'm of the principles of even in best ball, if I lose like two, three, four of my best players, like it's still a good team. I may not win a championship, but it's going to make the playoffs. Correct. So it is on the later side of the first, and it's almost a lock, I would say. But Adam – Really, it just comes down to what I touched on. If you think Kyle Pitts can ap- approach that warp advantage where he's going to finish as tight end three, tight end four, he doesn't have to be one, he doesn't have to be two, but he needs to be three or four and kind of be on par with what we saw from guys last year. This is a great move, and I would do it 10 times out of 10. Now, if he doesn't approach it and he's just seven, eight, nine, he's not even a tight end one, which is possible. In a best ball league, I'm going to want the the mayor, the first, the second side all day long. So you are making a bet. You are making your bet right now with Kyle Pitts, which is completely fine because if he does approach that tight end two, three, four, does he cost this ever again? No. (laughs) No. Like unless you go to the guy with two first plus, they're going to tell you to piss off. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Get out of my well, DMs. Get out. Get out of here, bro. We're posting you, like we're posting you in the Discord, making fun of you. Like this guy really thinks Kyle Pitts is only worth mayor or first and second, a late first at that. Nah, nah. And, and, and I think, Mike, um, he, here's what I will say. I think a lot of times for people that are watching this, like I'm not going to go as far as like you know, don't try this at home. Like I'm not going to sit here and tell you that. But this team 
was built off of the backbones, Mike, of you and I doing a podcast and knowing we wanted to focus on best ball and right. applying a lot of principles. And, and to me, see, he, here's the thing I learned, Mike, last year, and everybody listening, like this is going to be an extreme nuance. But if you play in a league, which is primarily lineup guys, their first best ball league, you can do the stuff that I did. Now, it's going to become more few and far between because there's more and more content on best ball. A lot of people like to play best ball. But here's what I found, Mike, in the league last year. That Now, this trade is a bad example because this liquidity doesn't actually mess with my roster. But I made like seven moves in this league. And I traded basically consolidating players. And the reason I did that is because last year in a league, Mike, where – you and I talk about, right, building up this depth in best ball. Like I had a team last year that when you look top to bottom, 29 players, there's not a single one that you're like, I would even think about cutting. And you're like, man, if 29 right. players that can come in out of your lineup, that's like you got the best ball glory hole. Like this is, we are in great shape, right? This is exactly what you want. Right. Here's the problem though. I'll tell you what, what problem that – created for me that I didn't know until this happened. So if you have 29 players that are really good value wise, right? Let's say everything goes well. Sure. You win a title probably, but what if you have five, six, seven injuries? Do you know what becomes problematic about a team like that is you are holding these guys. And if you can't move them, here's what really becomes problematic. You can't churn the bottom of your roster. So not only are you holding assets which are dead and wait for the season that you can't trade away, you are are missing waiver wire pickups weekly and every single time because you can't cut Rashad Bateman. You can't cut Javante Williams. You can't cut all these guys. You end up missing on, I mean, say whatever you want about any of those guys. They're making your lineup four times a year. Like right. that actually was something that I learned and I th- and I said with this team – Dude, I'm looking at the whole squad of this team because I built picks for two years. And I'm like, what? I can't do this again. Like, I'm not going to do it again. And there's so much youth here. What I need to try to do is pivot into assets, one, that are going to help me win, and then two, that are going to be more winning, maybe not even this year, but in the next couple, right? Like, I want to I want to consolidate into elite assets, which still, like Kyle Pitts is going to be. There is he liquidity? No, but is he close? Yes. Like, if, if, if Kyle Pitts, Mike, this year is, is tight end six, let's say, warp advantage isn't great. Like, I can still trade Kyle Pitts close to tight end three in dynasty value still, right? Right. Like, that's part Pretty of the cool. process that I'm making here. Now, I will say this. For Mr. Wonderful side, the opposite side, he needs depth. You can love Kyle Pitts to the moon. But if you need to get depth, this is the way you do it. The other problem in this right. league, Mike, that I will say – that makes this trade so hard to talk about without understanding the nuances. There was one person that controlled all the youth, whether that's players or picks, right? You. Right. And and what does that mean? Every other team convinced themselves that they were going to contend. And guess how many contended? The ones that contend. Because it can't be all of them. <laughs> Not very many. It can only be like three, four, whatever you want to call it, somewhere in that range. Everybody else isn't contending. So... The picks are already spoken for, and I think I will say this. I think Mr. Wonderful actually did a great job of trading out of pits given the market of the league, right? Like yes. y- you end up getting 24 first to 24 second and Mayer. I think Mayer is overvalued right now, but in this trade, I don't think he's really that overvalued, honestly. Like he's more like a true second in this trade uh, personally. So I-, I think this makes a lot of sense for Mr. Wonderful. I'm betting on the, the advantage of Kyle Pitts being a position – positional advantage like he once was in his rookie season I think a lot of his metrics project uh great but for everyone watching you've seen all the stuff we talked about with best ball let us know what you think of this deal um and let's get into another one Mike right but just one more thing on this go ahead go ahead like something to keep in mind man you had so many picks and you you still had so many picks after the 23 draft you had a ton of 24 picks as well you have all these youth guys where it's uh, you, you're over the roster limit. And I know it doesn't matter till August, but you have no flexibility whatsoever to go out and to acquire that, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of his name, Kalen, Kalen LeBorn. 
right? Sign sure. with the 49ers. Right. It might be the hot name at running back, right? That's the next Elijah Mitchell. That's the next Matt Breeder, whoever the hell they bring in. He might have a role. You have no flexibility if you're over the roster limit because you're looking going like, I got to cut four dudes just to pick up one guy that I'm going to take a dart on. Even Correct. in a deep, I mean, these are deep rosters. Mike, this 30, what is it, 35, 36? Right. I don't make best ball leagues with shallow rosters. I want the waivers to be barren, but even then there's still guys out there like, yeah, I'd like to be a, like, I'd like to have those guys to churn at the bottom of my roster. You have to, you're almost in a position where you go like, I got to start, I got to start consolidating into, into some studs. And if Michael Mayer himself is not going to fetch the price, right? Like I can't just go one for one and trade Mayer for a wide receiver two type. Let, let's just use that as an example. You have to think of creative ways where you can start to get some of these dudes off your rosters for guys that you're definitely not going to cut, but also still hold trade value in the future, right? Even if Kyle Pitts isn't that great, he has another year like last year, you're talking about it. People are still going to value him in the top five tight end range just because he's so damn young. And we've seen it his rookie year. So this is is the kind of heady moves that you have to make. And, And you touched on it on the other side. If you're the guy with all the picks and all the youth and and you need to make moves where you're getting some liquidity and some flexibility in season, you're the only dude to come see. You can't come see Mike because Mike doesn't have his picks. Mike's picks are leveraged from here to eternity. Mike has made a a massive gamble to go, and the only thing you're getting from Mike is going to be old guys, but Mike also knows that he's leveraged himself. I don't know why I'm talking about myself in the third person so much, but I like it. I like it too, (laughs) for what it's worth. (laughs) He has leveraged himself so hard that he's not going to be willing to give up multiple veteran assets for one guy. He doesn't want to do that. So it's a it's kind of a perfect storm. But I, I really think if I look at it, Adam, I'm in the league. I saw the trade go through and I go, all right, it's probably about fair for Pitts. And initially I'm going like, yeah, maybe he sold a little bit too low. But then you look more and more into it and I go, I can see the other side. If you're not a true Pitts guy – you could get one over on Adam here. Like if you don't believe, if you think there's a 30, 40% chance that Kyle Pitts never becomes tight end three, tight end four, boom, killed him. And this was your only opportunity to really do it. So good trade all around, but you're definitely putting your cards on the table, but you're also in a position where you kind of have to, right? We can talk about liquidity and all that stuff, but at some point you almost have too much. Where, like I got to get rid of some of this, right? I got well, to get, I get uh, an actual team on the field that's going to produce points. Yeah, and, and, and Mike, I think you made a lot of great points there. And I think the truth is, like, I think I – let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you point blank. I'm going to ask you a pointed question, Mike. For me, now, I had six 24s. I had 25s. I had a lot of youth. Like, to me, I could have probably slow played this one more year and then 24 yes. just basically said anyone that wants a chance has none, Right. But I'll be honest, I, my assets are so good right now that why would I not try to win now and then win next year? Right. And I know so much about best ball. Right. Why why give one more year to you guys? I gave y'all two. I gave y'all two, and I'm done why giving y'all years. Why donate one more year? No. Right. right. Uh, Now's the time. It, it's not a tax write off. Okay. This is this is a this right. is a this is a league that I'm playing for money, and I am trying to win. And I'm sitting there saying, man, this team is so good. If I can just get one quarterback that. Doesn't even have to be elite, but can be top twelve warp. Backfill with three young guys that are good enough. Backfill all these receivers, all these positional players. Like, why not consolidate and win now? And I think that, I'm going to ask you the point of question of this, Mike. Do you think that this was a good deal for Mister Wonderful? Because personally, for me, I know for a fact he can't get because I already had a bunch of the young guys. He can't get a 24 first, 24 second, and a Michael Mayer type from anyone else. So I'm going to ask you if you were trying to build depth, is this a deal that you think he did well on as well? Or do you think you could have asked for more? I do. I think if it's the, I think you probably could have asked for more, but it's not the worst thing. And you know how how keen I am on tearing down in best ball. The fact he got some pick liquidity back and he got a youthful tight end that people will be interested in for the next couple of years. That's a win. It's a win in my book. Um, in a lineup league, when you got to push the button on Michael Mayer as one of those guys, yeah, I would have wanted more. But in a start 13 best ball league, Adam, 100%. It's a win for him on that side. 
it's it doesn't look great on paper and i'm sure there'll probably be somebody in the comments who's like oh you sold too low on kyle pitts but you have to understand the dynamics of lineup versus best ball and and the lineup trades that we talk about a lot and that we'll feature on here later aren't readily available in best ball leagues and they sure as hell aren't readily available in best ball leagues when one guy owns all the youth and all the future capital <laughs> and controls all the cards yeah because and, if he comes to you with an absurd price for kyle pitts you go i'm good man i'm good i'll just go and uh it's a best ball league if i want some tight end production or i want to go i'm gonna buy a Jawan johnson i'm gonna buy an evan ingram i'm gonna buy you know joe blow over here that i know i can just stack three four five tight ends and i'm gonna get kyle pitts level out of out of these guys throughout the entirety of the season so good deal on both sides i just think uh the the big one for you if i'm looking at it, your lens and i'm in your shoes I would do the same thing, man. This is a bet that you guys have seen on this trade show. I am willing to make on Kyle Pitts. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't hate it as much. But on the other side of it, if this is the best deal you can get for Kyle Pitts and you need depth, like sometimes the depth is way more important than the one stud. Like as much as I love Justin Jefferson in some leagues where I have him in a best ball league, if I am going for it and I need depth, Who's the first guy going on the block? Man? All right, Mike. So Ooh, next uh, deal, baby. Yeah, man. Let's get oh, into it. Cooper Cup. We got a little uh, Matthew Barry's little Cooper Cup. Uh, Twelve team, one quarterback PPR lineup start nine. So, Mike, got to shift your mind a lot from the last deal. All right, we're talking best ball start thirteen. Yeah. Right, we're talking one QB lineup start nine. Hmm. Okay, that switching the mindset. Cooper Cup. And the 105 now, one quarterback, think about what the 105 is, right? Versus what Traylon Burks and the 102 is. All right. So, is that like, like QJ? That's like Addison. It's right outside of the range. Oh, so, so, you're looking I'm at, right? Bijan's going to go. Gibbs is going to go. Gibbs, JSN's JSN, going to go. So, 104 QJ, and 105 are the same thing. It's Addison. QJ, Addison. Uh, if you, if you love right. Zay Flowers, maybe. Yeah, right. So, that's the range versus Traylon right. Burks and the 102. So it's basically at this point, like 105, compare what you think of Traylon Burks right now to the 105, which is going to be Addison or QJ, right? And then compare Cooper Cup in a one quarterback start nine league to really Jameer Gibbs. Like that's what we're kind of looking at when I really thought about this trade when I saw it come through. Man, oh man, this is a tough one. This is a toughie, ain't it? Yeah, it is. It, it's tough, man. Um, all right, let's start off with this. Let me just work through this in my you, brain. Hey, come on. Cooper Cup or Jameer Gibbs? Cooper Cup or Jameer Gibbs? Is it hot takey for me to say Jameer Gibbs? I'd rather have Jameer Gibbs than Cooper Cup. Let me say, can, can I at least say this part? Because I think in the super flex market, everyone's going to be like, no, why would you ever even consider Cooper Cup over Gibbs, right? But in one quarterback... Like, I do want to say, when you take the warp out of the quarterbacks that are crazy, which is what Superflex really does, I think it becomes a closer conversation. Now, dynasty-wise, I think I'm still going to take Gibbs here. But if you told me, like, I'm ready to win, I hate to say this, Mike, I really do, given how far we've we've come and admitted that receivers are good. If I'm a contender, I will risk what I lose in Gibbs to go win one with Cup for one year. I would do it. Now, dynasty-wise, if I needed to get off a of Cup, I I am beyond elated to get Jameer Gibbs for Cooper Cup. I'm, I I mean that sincerely. Like if I have a if I'm not ready to go and I can get rid of my Cup yeah. for Gibbs, I am There's no way you get a better offer. Period. I think Cooper Cup is fantastic, right? We've seen him be dynamite. Mm -hmm. with Matthew Stafford. Now, mm -hmm. the problem that scares the shit out of me with Cooper Cup is I know everybody's kind of projecting the Rams to be bad, right? And this comes a lot from like from from people in the know, uh, people that are way smarter than I am, right? And specifically, I'm talking with Ray. He's like, man, everything the Rams are doing, we, we talked about it on the draft stream when they're making their picks, right? Everything they're doing sounds like they're tanking. They're tanking. Now, I know it's hard to believe because Sean McVay is such a damn good coach and they're going to have enough pieces on there. Like, this is a team, honestly, too, at the end of the year, we can look and won seven games. You no, know the, I, mean? I think that's like, the they biggest just don't problem. fully embrace the thing. 100%. 100% agree. And if, they, if they were to win seven, eight, nine games, let, let's, let's just say it's in that ballpark. If they would, I would assume Matt Stafford and Cooper Cup are a big part of that. 
Okay. They played a lot. No assumptions. Produced. That's a thousand now, percent. That's a thousand percent. If people are right about them tanking though, and Matt Stafford only plays a handful of games, right? And they're like, you know, yeah, maybe your, your neck, your back isn't that good. All right. We're going to have you sit out, right? We're going to have whoever the hell, I don't even know who the backup court, the Stetson Bennett, right? They drafted him. We're going to have Stetson Bennett play. How's Cooper Cup look then? All right. Not that great, man. <laughs> Not that great. So when I say like Gibbs over Cooper Cup, I, I don't know if it's hot taking or not, but that's what I do. Now, if I look at the other part, and, and maybe this is me just being me too, because if I look at the other part, I go uh, Traylon Burks or Quentin Johnson or Traylon Burks or Jordan Addison or Traylon Burks or Zay Flowers. I want, I want Traylon Burks over all those guys. All of them. All of them, Adam. All of them. So if I look at it as a trade from that standpoint, I go, all right, look, two wins. I think the only one that's really close for me is the the Gibbs or the Cup because Cup could go multiple ways, right? He could be absolutely fantastic, and there's no way Gibbs was even close to it. I don't care about dynasty value. I don't care about market. We're talking about a guy who just a year ago, I brought it up earlier in the show, man, but that warp tool in 2021, this dude broke warp. You want to know who the number one warp player was? It was Cooper Cup. It wasn't a damn quarterback. It wasn't Patrick Mahomes. It wasn't Josh Allen. It wasn't Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow. It wasn't any of those guys. It wasn't Travis Kelsey the god? It was Cooper motherfucking Cup. Period. He broke warp. Period. Oh. And, and, and I think – can I can I say one more piece, though, Mike, about this? Yeah, go for it, man. Sorry, I'm, I'm out here. No, 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 no. Let, for, first and foremost, never apologize for giving everybody that wants to know stuff about these trades the in-depth – Period. And then here's what I'll say to that point, though, Mike. I think, can I tell you why more than ever I actually am in on Cup, and especially this time of year? And the reason I say this time of year, I want everyone to listen to this and think about this, right? Right now, everybody's probably excited, and we tried to do an AMA tonight, but it it failed about 12 minutes in or something, um, on Rookie Fever, right, with D-Bro. And here's here's the reality. Everybody's getting over their skis on rookies, and... I'm not here to tell you that rookies are not important and that age is not important and that youth is not important in dynasty football because it is. But guess what always gets lost in the sauce of everybody being so excited for this youth? Do you know what it is? I can tell you. It's How Cooper Cup. It's Javante, it's, it's Devontae Adams, right? It's, it's Travis Kelsey. It's Mark Andrews. It's those guys. And... I think, let me say this, I, I know that on teams, like with Travis Kelsey and Andrews, there, there's 100% correct, like though, Mike, the same principle applies, but at least at receiver, you have like 12 guys that when you talk about just age and dynasty, you could actually put above them, and it's, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm going to do it, but I could see a case where that's the, that's the way it is. At tight end, at least, like, y'all are tripping if you got anybody ahead of those two guys, period, Kelsey and and Andrews. Outside of Pitts, which you saw me trade for, but even then, I'm not projecting him to score more points than those guys this season. I'm just projecting him to be tight end three, tight end five this year and continue to climb based on the metric we've seen. Cooper Cup for me, Mike, the reason I want to buy him, and based on what you said, this is a big thing I want to want to get to. If they're trailing, let, let's say they are not very good. Let's say they're trailing a lot. Right. Like, I don't, here, here's what I do know about McVay. And, and I know that he had to take a while to think about if he wanted to retire or if he wanted to continue to stay. And he stayed. And I think they basically gave him green light. Like, we believe in you. We trust in you. We're going to let you kind of ride this thing out. And we know it's not going to be pretty for a couple of years. McVeigh, the way he is, he is not going to just go away. He wants to try to win. Right. So when they're down, Mike, Stafford's in there throwing the football. They did add at least some protection for him, right? I think there's a very real scenario that even if they're not that great, let's say they win six, seven games, Cooper Cup is in a position where they're throwing. A lot. Not a lot. A lot. Mike, when he was 2021, when he was the, the warp monster, they were ahead. They were winning. They were, they were winning. Winning, winning football games. Like, and you know just what for- they were still doing? Throwing the football. I'm just saying there, I think there's a scenario where Cooper Cup return – because here's the thing. If you go back and look at Warp last year, 
it won't include probably games where he was injured midway through. And right. Cooper Cup was also really spectacular last year. I, for me, Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup is one of these guys that I know if it goes wrong. We already saw what happened last year. I know if it goes wrong, I'm going to incinerate value. Let's call it that. Like It's going to basically go up in flames. But at these prices, though, Mike, I'm like I'm kind of I'm kind of willing to do it. Now I will admit, Gibbs is is a tough one for me because I think Gibbs is one of these players that could be really special. And when you talk about a guy that was drafted twelfth overall, it, it's it's tough. Um, what did I What did I say to you about Gibbs? Right, you asked me a trade question on Gibbs. <laughs> Like, where are you at with Gibbs, right? We we talked off air, in text messages, old school, right? You had to trade, and I'm going like, I'm in. I'm in. I think he's everything I always wanted DeAndre Swift to be, but he's healthy. And He's, he's healthy, right? That's how the, in on, on Gibbs I am. I'm like, I'm back. I'm back I'm on back. the running back train with Jameer Gibbs. Let's go. DeAndre Swift 2.0. I'm back. And if you saw the war room, they, there was rumors and clear talk about them taking him in their first pick. And when they got him at that 12 spot, the place erupted. And to, for a running back, to, get, to erupt like that for a running back at 12 means like they were in on Jameer Gibbs. I, I, I think it's going to be really special what he can do. But I will say, Mike, as much as I love him, as much as I love him, I think Cup can offer true advantage at, at, at his position where right. I love Gibbs long term. I just don't I don't think he's going to offer that in his rookie season points per game wise. Here's the thing on Cooper Cup, right? We know he didn't play from week eleven onward. Right. Mm-hmm. With that what do you have? An ankle? Yeah, high ankle, yeah. Uh Cooper Cup. Best ball. Best ball spike weeks. And I know this is a lineup, but I still like to look at it for my lineup leagues too. Mm-hmm. Right. Cooper Cup on the year. On the year. Five spike weeks eight above average weeks eight he had one week adam one week where he wasn't an above average or a spike week and that was the week he got injured that's what i was getting other at than too. that his warp he, changed because of that he, by the way yes it did it absolutely did he he's wide receiver 13 total total on the year wide receiver 13 total in warp and he didn't play half the year which is crazy on a per game basis the only players the only players better than Cooper Cup on a per game basis for warp. Only players. Austin Eckler, RB1, pretty damn good. Jalen Hurts, pretty damn good. Travis Kelsey, Josh Allen, Justin Jefferson, Patrick Mahomes. That's it. And that's it. Of End list. of Cooper list. Cooper Cup was elite. Look, so I think this really does come down to do you think the Rams. There's only two scenarios, Adam. Either they're trying to be competitive and they're going to throw the football a lot and they're going to play the Cooper Cup and they're going to play the Matthew Stafford, or do you think that they go full on, hey, we know we're dog shit. We've kind of been signaling it through the draft that we're dog shit. We're we're tanking for Caleb Williams, baby. We're keeping him in L.A. If that's the narrative and that's what actually happens, I'm not too interested in Cooper Cup. I know they're going to be behind, but – Either the Rams are going to be a competitive team that's going to win six, seven, eight, nine games, or they're going to be absolutely atrocious. And if they're absolutely atrocious, I don't think they're they're that bad with Cooper Cup actually doing anything super meaningful for fantasy on a war perspective. Yeah, I think I think one last piece I will add to this, Mike. Um, I, I also know with Sean McVay, he basically told his whole coaching staff, if you guys want to go, go. And that basically to me signaled like right. I'm gonna stick this through. I'm not gonna be one of these guys that just jumps to the better, greener grass on the other pasture, right? He's not gonna Pete Carroll it. Ooh, no. shots fired. <laughs> wow. That's uh might Got be him. a bit might have been a bit much. Mike, but here's here's what I do know. Cooper Cup's contract goes one more season. And I, I don't think if this year is awful that Sean McVay is gonna hold Cooper Cup's feet to the fire and be like, you're going to stick here. I think Cooper Cup gets traded in that scenario. And I'll be honest, Mike, there's not a lot of people in front of Cooper Cup on any team that makes me say, ah, Cooper Cup can't eat for another year or two. Here's why, here's why I push back on you. We didn't really care about Cooper Cup until Matt Stafford showed up. We really did. And there's a reason. Like what we did, what we did, we did. Can I tell you what changed though? Because because I agree with you, 
But what changed was the he reason we were concerned was because Cooper Cup ran a lot in the slot, and people didn't know with Matthew Stafford coming over how they were going to run their offense because at that point right. they were running a lot of 12 personnel, and he wasn't even going to see slot at 12 personnel. It, I will say this, though. There's a reason that in Bomb Squad, shout out to myself, I'm the only true champion of that league now that it's officially dead. Uh, the only true champion, right? We don't got the uh, the Bengals Bills game in that that, that the uh, the fake championships we had last year. The only true champion of that league. There's a reason I got Cooper Cup for where I got him in the auction, Adam, and it's because nobody really cared before Matt Stafford was there. Even when Matt Stafford was in his first year, nobody really cared. We did that draft in the off season. We already knew Stafford was there. Nobody really cared. He was he was okay. I mean, he was an okay receiver. Wasn't this warp guy that we had, but Matt, you insert Matt Stafford, and all of a sudden it's like, man, he is targeting him 150 times, 160 times. He is always looking for Cooper Cup and feeding them. And we kind of even saw that last year when Cooper Cup went down. It was like, insert Ben Skoranek. <laughs> insert the next guy in the slot that he wants to target a billion times. So not that Ben Skoranek's any good, but... I would say this, being with L.A. with a Sean McVay offense and being with Matt Stafford is a ton of Cooper Cup's value. So if he were to get traded, Adam, I'm, like he's still Cooper Cup in some people's minds, but that's a dude actively, if he got traded, I would be trying to trade myself on my dynasty teams because I think he would be valued over where he's actually going to produce. Fair enough. Um, at, at these prices, now let me say this. Jameer Gibbs one for one is is a, a a pretty steep price, but I think a lot of times where Cooper Cup's valued right now, I'm willing to buy. So um, interesting deal. Let us know what you think in the comments. Who gets this right? Um, I'll admit JB's not on the show, so the AAF commander is not here. The one QB commander is not here. <laughs> let the us final know where opinion. we. Right, we we need to, we need you guys to let us know what we're gonna do here. So um, let us know. Let's get into another trade. All right, Mike. So we got a twelve team superflex lineup. Start nine again. This time it's mellow. Um, mellow, watching this, you know we hate your trades by and large. But this time we're gonna grade fairly. Stefan Diggs, Mike, is being acquired for Drake London and Greg Dolchich. Let's not forget Mellow is getting the three hundred five back. I, I'm curious your thoughts here, Mike, because. When I think about a 12-team Superflex lineup start nine, I know it's a it's a small tight end premium, not worth mentioning. Like Greg Dolchitz for me in the 305, I'm I'm comfortable enough with to where if you're telling me I'm getting digs for London, like if I'm ready to go, I, I I'm I'm very very willing and ready to make that trade. So I don't know if you have any differing opinions or thoughts here, but like if if Dolchitz is what I'm losing in the lineup start nine, I'm happy to go ahead and take digs on a on a contending team. I, I understand what time of year we're in. Like, we, we talk about this all the time, the, the dynasty cycle. I understand what part of the cycle we're in, where it's it's youth, it's, it's rookies, it's second-year guys, it's projections. This is the part that we're in. The part that I have such a problem with, and maybe it's because I made the switch this year, and I, I've talked about it not only on this show, on the AMA and the Discord. I talked about it on the draft stream with Ray. I'm just – I'm kind of over this where I, I value youth so much all the time, right? Especially getting myself caught up in the dynasty yes. cycle. Yes. Stefan Diggs is, is, is effing fantastic, okay? Tyreek Hill is effing fantastic. So when I'm looking at my ranks and I'm going and I'm going, could I see a scenario where Stefan Diggs is still really good for the next two, three years? Yeah. Yeah. Tied to Josh Allen – what he's already shown, I can see a scenario where he is still elite for another couple of years. So why the hell am I going to rank? This isn't nothing against Drake London, but why am I going to rank a second-year guy over him just because he's younger when he hasn't done anything? When Stefan Diggs comes out every single year and puts up elite numbers over and over and over and over again. I get it. We get too enthralled with after 28, they're dead. And I get that's what the dynasty market is. But this is kind of where I want to start taking advantage of some people, and especially at the wide receiver position, because I think we do it there more than anywhere else. We just talked about Cooper Cup, 
And I told you, the only thing that concerns me on Cooper Cup is just the direction of the ramps, right? I have none of these concerns with the Buffalo Bills. I have absolutely none of them. The Buffalo Bills ain't taken. The Buffalo Bills are trying to win a Super Bowl. Josh Allen's going to be throwing to Stephon Diggs a lot, and Stephon Diggs is going to be scoring fantasy points a lot. So when I say Stephon Diggs way over Drake London, I don't say it lightly, and I truly mean it. Now, Greg Dolchers is fine. But we've had multiple conversations about these second-year tight ends, these guys who are rookies who do a little something. Scott Connor has talked about it at nauseum. Adam, at this point, I'm going to say, would I rather have Greg Dolchus or the 305? It would be Greg Dolchus. I'm not going to lie to you. I would rather have Greg Dolchus. But like, I could replace a Greg Dolchus with a Schoonmaker, a Darnell Washington, a Luke Musgrave, a Tucker Craft. And who's to say those guys aren't the next Greg Dolchich, right? And I just did a one-for-one one there, but I massively upgraded in a start nine lineup league on the production I'm going to get every time I push the button on Stefan Diggs versus Drake London. So while you joked around, Mello, we always hate your trades. I absolutely love this one, and I would do it a billion times out of a billion if I had a team that was anywhere near, anywhere near competing. The only way I wouldn't do it is if I had a rebuilder in best ball, Adam, where I know the variance is more controlled. The variance isn't as extreme as in lineup leagues. So this one's a smash because you're going to push the button every single week on Stefan Diggs and you're going to know that, hey, I got a guy who's a threat for 20 every time. He's never coming out of my lineup unless he's hurt. I don't care what the matchup is. I am starting Stefan Diggs. I can't say that about Drake London in a start nine. I cannot say that about Drake London. Yeah, I think, you know, Mike, um, it's interesting as as you're talking through this, like I have so many thoughts going on in my head. And and the reason I say it that way is I want everybody to think about this for a second. And this is, we're going to get off of Dynasty just for a minute, okay? And, And not saying that Dynasty still isn't important, but when you think about Stephon Diggs last year, Mike, there, there is a big difference in his splits in the first eight weeks and in the final eight weeks. And then if you're thinking about that and you're saying, why is that the case? Well, two things. One, they don't, I mean, they drafted Kincaid, but they don't have, you know, somebody else that says, like, we shouldn't double Stefan Diggs, one. And then two, the other big, big, big thing, Josh Allen was not 100%. In the back half of the yeah, season. Yeah, messed up elbow. That exactly. messed up elbow, man. Exactly. And the way Stephon Diggs started for the first eight, nine weeks of the season, like he was tracking for the Dynasty Trade Show, the wide receiver one in all of fantasy football. Mike, he's still not 30. Now, agreed. Like, Drake London and him, age-wise, there is a gigantic difference. But Drake London, points per game, lineup start nine. Listen, I know everybody loves him. I do, too. I know there's a lot of reasons in the metrics to say, like, Drake London's about to be that dude. Like, a lot of things in the back half of the year, what you saw with him, like, he's that guy. Still no quarterback. Still Arthur Smith. They drafted a running back in the top ten. I love him, like him a lot. This format, one for one. Like I, there, honestly, I, I'm going to tell everybody this right now. There is not even a single question. I will forego six years and a second, frankly, to get to Stephon Diggs. Like I'm not. That, oh. There's no exaggeration. Period. There's no exaggeration there. Values. Talk whatever you want. If I'm ready to win, I want I want Stephon Diggs. So, so then when I get to the 305 and Dolchich, can, can I say this part though, Mike? Because I, I agree with you. Like if, yeah. if we talk about the tight end and, and Dolchich, yeah, I want, I want Greg Dolchich because one, I already have seen it and I know he, yes. I don't love the guy, but he's a lot more solidified than, I mean, I like Darnell Washington, but there's Fryer Muth. Like they, they may just want to yes. use him as a blocker because they have yes. a terrible offensive line, right? There's, there's a lot of reasons to not necessarily love those tight ends. Why Why does that have to be where Melo stops? Why does he have to take a tight end here? Why does he have to even draft at 305? Why can't he use this Boom. piece 
with more other assets to go get something that's going to matter in lineup start nine. Because I'll tell you what doesn't, Greg Dolchich. I'll tell you what doesn't, the tight ends in the third round, unless you move off of them at a peak value. <laughs> so I'm going to take Stefan Diggs. I'm going to take this extra third, and I'm going to probably move it to something different than a tight end position. Um, if you took one and you tr- and you plan to you know sell at a peak or when that guy has a couple spike weeks, no, no issues. But for me, Stefan Diggs as a whole – in lineup start nine is worth the bottom piece. I'm using the third as extra collateral to go make extra moves to bump up and see what how how can I make something else get a little closer to lineup value if I'm on a buy or if I need a flex spot. Yeah. Then I am w- willing to even like consider what Greg Dolchus and 305 are in this format because if this is a best ball start 13 or something, like we're having different conversations about the entirety of this, but in this format, I want digs. I want the pick. I'm going to use the pick to do something different because lineup start nine is all about the elite guys. And as much as I like London, he ain't elite yet. So that's the biggest thing for me. Any, any I, thoughts too? I will say this. It doesn't matter the format. <laughs> I'm on that little side, man. Even in these start 13 best ball leagues, right? Start 14, whatever the hell it is. I want digs and I want the 305. I get it. Yeah, what you made about Dolchich, yes. In in a vacuum, that's what I touched on. I want Dolchich over the 305. Okay. Um, I don't feel as good about the tight ends because, like you said, I've seen it from Dolchich, but it doesn't mean it's a tight end. Like, even if he doesn't take the position of tight end, he could get a running back, um, like a Zach Evans. And, Adam, it's not crazy to think. With Zach Evans with the Rams, what we what we touched on, maybe Cam Akers is a, a trade candidate because they wanna they wanna really tank. And then you look up and it's like by week eight or nine, Zach Evans is out there getting seventy percent of the snaps. Like even on a bad offense that's tanking, I still want a damn running back in a best ball league that's getting seventy percent of the snaps, right? Dudes on the field. Even though I'm not the biggest Zach Evans fan, like I would still be interested. I'm just chasing snaps at this point. But even if it's something else, but to your point, I'm thinking I'm thinking exactly what you're thinking about the 305. It's not necessarily the player. I'm not drafting a position. I'm thinking about what can I package that 305 with? What else can I attach to that 305? Maybe to get another piece. Maybe I get another wide receiver. Maybe, maybe I attach it to my third quarterback, and all of a sudden I make that jump up a tier instead of being – that that guy who's just a fringe, like I know he might start fo- Baker Mayfield, right? Could I attach the three hundred five to Baker Mayfield? Maybe get into another tier of quarterback that I go. This dude's probably starting sixteen games, <laughs> right? I don't have to worry about him and Kyle Trask competing. Something like that. So I don't think it matters what the format is. I'm looking at it going. I want the digs and I want the three hundred five side. I love the trade for Melo. Melo, you did a fantastic job. Uh, good job, buddy. Good job. That's what I want. <laughs> You're on mute. Still on mute. Um, nice job, Mello. Soak that in because uh, that that is not going to be often we say good job, Mello. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Words we don't say a lot on this show. Not at all. All right, Mike. Uh, 12 oh, team. Oh, jeez. You and T-Rock. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, Mike, I'm going to let um, – you kind of start this one off. So let me let me just give you the settings, the idea here. All right. So twelve Go team. Read it out, man. We got we got podcast listeners who need to hear it. Twelve team superflex PPR lineup start ten. So let me just say this is the fade the fetal league. Uh, Nick is in this league. Nick Carlano. So Mike, I'll just give you my team. Right. I, I built it like you and I talked principles last year in best ball, and it's just not. It just ain't it, man. Like, I'm going to just tell you what it is. It's right. not it. I got six running backs in the top 15, 20. And right. my my quarterbacks are Tua and they're Daniel Jones and there's no one else. I do have um, Garrett Wilson. But then it's like, okay, I got Devontae Smith, another great one. But we got to start three. It's Gabe Davis. And then it gets to roster clogger yeah. range, right? So, like frankly, this is a team. How we built how how we built all our teams in 2021, and how we built our teams in 2022 that failed miserably. Right, and well, most of the time. Most well, of the time. and here's the thing, right? If this is best ball, like if this league was a best ball league, 
even start 10, you can get by with I, I'm so much more comfortable. Exactly. I'm so much more comfortable doing that. This league, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. No. And not only am I not doing it, I haven't been doing it. Someone has my 104 from this year. Um, it just... So anyway, long story short, is T-Rock wants my, my Tony Pollard. And he's trying to send me this 25 first, which, by the way, T-Rock, let me just go ahead and shout you out. Like, his team by 2025, this pick probably ends up being late. Let's call it what it is. Like, his team has Mahomes. It has Hurts. It's built right. He's, he's been trying... killing it. He's been killing it in this league. Yeah, and he's he's been killing. Yeah, he 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 bought correctly. He did what he should. He, he listened to us on the lineup side, but I was already built the wrong way. So he's sending me a first, right? And then he's going to send me his twenty four second. But here here's the big thing for me, right? Like the K Otten part for Chig is something that I plan to utilize to my advantage, not in holding Chig, but in that K Otten. Right was going to die on my team because nobody cares anymore. Baker Mayfield, <laughs> Kyle Trask, all the stuff with, with, with you, Kate Otten. You had, you had a stretch. You had a stretch. <laughs> that was and, it. And nobody bought. And here he is still on my team. And for that reason, I needed to move. And I know that this is the best tight end that T-Rock has because he's not really trying to win just yet. He's going through this year. But his tight end's not great. But Chig's the best he's got. So I look at Chig as a very movable piece. And if you watched last trade show, which we had while I was on vacation, people were yeah. fighting, fighting me on <laughs> Chig. <laughs> fighting and, for Chig. Uh, listen, I'm I'm not here to tell you anything that I told you last week. Like I'm just concerned. Okay, I'm just a concerned citizen. Fight me, hate me, whatever you want to call it. Is that what you did though? You shit on Chig so you could acquire him from T Rock. No, nah, but when, it was was that it wasn't 40? it wasn't the 4D move. But then when I'm like, you know what, I just talked all that shit about Chig. Let me go see if I can swap one for one K Dot and and Chig, because T Rock's gonna know that's not my move. But uh, you know, sometimes you gotta play up. You know the content you put out and the, <laughs> the reality that not everybody watches this show, right? They're, I think there's somebody else in this league that will buy Chig appropriately, and nobody cares about Kate Otten at all, right? Like, Kate Otten in a lineup start 10, it's a standard tight end premium league, Mike. Like, this is, uh, I, I, if I remember right, it's a half PPR for, for running backs. It's it's a one for receivers, and then it's a 1.5 for tight ends, right? Like, Kate Otten, psh, this format, eh, forget about him. Chig, I I'm not even that interested, but like when I can take him now and do other moves, like th all of a sudden now I'm getting a 25 first, which, which could be late, but it's three years down the road, 24 second for Pollard. Like that makes sense. Even though it's really, really far out, like it's, it makes sense to me, especially cause I have six running backs, but then I have the Chig right. swap for Auden, which was a, an additional, like just leverage piece. And now I can move Chig for whatever. Like liquidity, because I'm not probably going to hold him in this format. Th that that was the piece that pushed it over the top. Frankly, curious That's your thoughts fair. on the deal. Um, so I will say this: when I when I look at it, uh, when I look at it, I'm using your your line. I'll say this: it's becoming a habit. Damn it! <laughs> I like that. I Chick like it a lot. For Otten. Chick for Otten. Even though you and I both, I guess, technically dunked on Chig last episode. A chick for hot, no question about it. I'm taking chick because right. Right. not only because one, one. Let me get this straight. I think he's a better bet at the tight end position than Otten points wise, but two, market value. The pushback we received on chick definitely tells me that people love chick a lot more than they love K dot. So that's a home run slam dunk. One for one, I would do it. I will also say this, Adam. Tony Pollard for a 24 first random at this point. I don't know where it is. I would rather have the first, but because this one's a 25 first, I do feel like you need to be taxed a little bit. So the 25 first and the 24 second does feel, feel like an appropriate tax All right. Right? because I have to wait. Yes. It feels, it feels appropriate to tax somebody an extra second because the pick is so far out. The only hesitation I have and I will say this to everybody, and this depends on your league, because 
I think we're kind of have an epidemic right now in Dynasty. We we do have it. We have it amongst content creators. We have it amongst just random leagues. If you feel good about your league being whole and not disbanding, because I don't know how many leagues have just died on me in the last couple of years, and you've been a part of it too. Five, ones where three, you three to five, right? This, three to five. Where you where you have built like you have gone the productive struggle route. You have built youth. Right, you're thinking about playing for 2024, 2025, and now you don't get that option because the league is just poof, it's gone. But if you feel good about your league being there, if it's one of these leagues, if it's one of our patron leagues, which I am stubborn to a fault, kind of like a, a marriage at some point, like I ain't divorcing you, you ain't divorcing me, one of us has to die before this marriage is over. If that is kind of the attitude that you have in the league, by all means, trade for 2025s, trade for 2026s. But if it's one of these leagues where you're like, I don't know, man, everybody kind of seems weird, it's stagnant, there's not a lot of activity, maybe you have those one or two people when they see a trade go through, they cry. We all know those people who they put like a 10-page post about how unfair or how this is breaking the league. If you have that feeling... Don't do it, man. Adam, like if you're in this league and you're like, I'm gonna I don't know if this league's gonna last. Now I'm not saying this is the one, but if you're if you're in one of those type of leagues, I don't know how 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 gung ho I'm gonna be about trading for twenty twenty five picks when I don't know if this league's actually gonna be there. And that is the sad truth of where we're at right now, kind of as a dynasty community as a whole, because I've seen far too many of these just up in smoke, whatever the reasons are. But if I look at it and I go, Adam, this league's going to be here in 2026, 2027, 2028. It's going to be here for forever. I look at it, I go, Chig over Otten, pretty easy. Uh, I would take a 24 first for Tony Pollard right now, no questions asked. But because it's in 2025, I do feel like you do get to ask for that tax. So I do want the second on top. I look at both of those pieces and I go, I want your side. It's not just because you're my guy. And we do a show together, but we also think very similarly. This is where I look at T-Rock and I go, man, just ask. Just just hit me up. You're a patron of ours. Just hit me up in the DMs. I have no problem screwing Adam over. I'm sure he does it to me all the time. <laughs> I'd be like, no, I ain't paying this. Are you crazy? <laughs> there's right. no way but, in hell I would pay Adam this. But, but, Adam's looking at it and going, there's no way in hell he should pay me this. So this is a slam dunk for your side. I, I will say this too, um, on that on that note. I, I think with T Rock's team, right? So he's got Mahomes, he's got Hertz, right? It's a lineup start ten. He has a lave and he has um let's say use our tactics, Mike, the four D chess stuff. He he has played yes, it at hand. He has the twenty four picks, he has some twenty five picks. And I think basically he's like, you know what? Because I have anchored with two top five guys that I feel really, really good about, I have a lot of it. I have built right. Like, I'm willing to send my 25 first and 24 seconds and Chig away. Like, Kate Otten is just an extra play piece, right? Like, I don't think he's thinking Kate Otten's going to matter for him. But I think he's basically like, I'm willing to forego those because Pollard is a piece that, if it hits right, he can either trade away to people that value running back in this league, which there's a bunch of still, actually. Or he can say means a lot in my lineup when I already have built the right way. And I think part of that gave T-Rock the leverage that I talked about earlier in the show, Mike, with myself, right? Like this is a guy that's ready to yes. go, but he has all the all the pieces. And I'm looking at my team like, bro, like I don't I, – I, I built this the wrong way. And you know what? I hate the fact that you know that I did that and you have the right pieces, but – I'm trying to sell off of my my Pollard and like frankly nobody in this league nobody's really to th- nobody's really ready to let go of the contending piece because yes. there's a lot of teams in this league that say they can win and it's one of Nick's only dynasty leagues and it's a premier league so people think about it very highly and they think they can all win so on that edge is basically like, all right, well, I'll be one of the guys that starts taking the picks, even though I got to go through T-Rock to get them. I'm going to start doing this the opposite way so that in a year or two, I can rebuild this thing the way I know I should have versus I built it like a best ball team and it's just not a best ball team in this league. So that's that's the reasons I think the, the deal got done. 
I think the chig for Ott and Swap is what really made it for me. And I told D-Rock that straight up. I'm like, listen, man. I know, because here's the problem. I know for a fact if I take this 25 first on for Pollard, like that's mine for two years. Doesn't mean nothing. Not, the, the league won't fade, Mike. Like this league's not going away. Right. But that's in a war chest that I can't move. If I'm going to take that piece on, like if I if I take away my flexibility to move Pollard for something, like I want the 24 second and I want the chig as tax. And that's ex- that's exactly what happened. You already kind of alluded to that in this in this trade. So I, I will say this, Adam. Um, I touched on it when we started the show. Uh, we have been doing better and better as a you and I and, and now Koopa. Like our brand is growing. The support that we have given it uh, have been given is is absolutely incredible, and I'm floored by it because we're just a couple of dumbasses up here talking and going through our strategy and how our brain works. But you guys, you guys, you guys tune in and you support the shit out of us, and I appreciate you. Now, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but say there's one day we we make it quote unquote big, right, Adam? We're just we are flush with cash. We are. We have been doing everything right. We have finally made it right. I am. I am flush with cash. I got more money in my bank account than I know what to do with. Right? Sure, I'm going. Sure. Holy hell! I can't believe I made it this far. You know what? The one thing I won't do though, and I, I promise you this, I will not overpay for mid. I will not go to the car dealership and go like I'm going to overpay for a Toyota Camry. Nah, nah. <laughs> like if I'm going to overpay the Tony Pollard like, edition. Kid, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would not go the limited, the, the limited Camry, the limited Corolla. Camry. <laughs> nah, 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 man. I'm going to the the Ferrari dealership. I'm going to the Mercedes dealership. I'm going to the Lambo dealership. Like, if I'm gonna overpay, I'm flush with assets. I'm overpaying for something elite, Fair. something that is up there. I'm not overpaying for mid, and I think that is probably my biggest problem. I know he's been doing fantastic in this league. Sure, I have seen the moves. He is in the Discord posting them. I'm just not overpaying for mid, man. I'm can, not going to shoot that shot. If I if I got the assets for it, I am shooting for the moon over t- and over and over again. I don't even care if I fail, but I'm shooting for the moon. Can I tell you the the fatal flaw for this deal? Although I don't, I still think his team's going to be great enough to where it doesn't matter. He wanted to move that twenty five right now. And he kept pushing it to other people, I can guarantee, and myself. Because he's like, this is late, and it's so far out. I want to win now. Value the shit out of your... Yeah, that's what happened. So, if... Right, everybody knows you want to sell it, so nobody really wants to buy it, right? The price comes down, right? If I look desperate to sell something, nobody's really paying me what it's actually worth. They're going, well, he really wants to get rid of it. Which is why I take the 25 first as the primary asset, but win the other two pieces of the deal to make sure that I get the value I need out of it. Because right. I know it's going to sell at some point. So, um, like, I'll say this. it I think T-Rock still ends up pretty well ahead, but, like, at this point, I'm trying to needle moves. And I think the needle is better on my side than his here, but... Uh, let us yeah, know. You, Comments. You, let us know. Let us know. Are we you tripping much or what? on the full side. <laughs> you much more on the full side, man. You're good. D Rock, I got you, man. Just reach out. That's that's where we're at. Okay, Mike. Uh staying in the same lane. Twelve team superflex PPR lineup start ten. Antho Honcho um is acquiring Chuba Hubbard in a twenty five second. Now, speaking of twenty five picks, twenty five second for Damian Harris from Kingslayer. Killed it. This is it, I, can Killed I tell it. you can I tell you this is I don't care what it is, lineup, best ball. Like, okay. Is there a very real scenario that uh, Damian Harris outscores Chuba Hubbard? Sure. Yeah, sure. For sure. Uh, won't won't even try to pretend that, like, Damian Harris is a completely worthless asset. I'm not going to do that. But, like, if I can – lineup or best ball, Mike? Here's the thing. If I can replace it with a guy that's – have a reasonable expectation to be replaceable or equal points, and I'm picking up a second, forget format, right? Like, can we just talk process, though? Like, to me, that second, now especially that it's lineup, is exactly what I want to do. Give me a guy that might be a plug-and-play guy in Carolina with Miles Sanders who's been banged up that could start for me for three, four weeks, period, right? And then... 
the 25 second, whether it's now or in a year or two, like that's a piece I can move for a Damian Harris. If he ends up being the guy that I want to buy, or if it's uh, name, name your player, uh, Rashad Penny, if you think he's the guy and he's has the backfield for a minute, like in this, in this lineup, start 10, a second round pick can buy you running backs that have spot weeks and plus, honestly. So even though it's devalued in 25, I, I, I want that side kind of with this range of running backs. It's, it's regardless. Like I just want the extra piece in the pick here. I, I need to say this with a, a preface. I do not get paid for the amount of times I plug Scott Connor, right? As many times I say his name, I do not get paid for. But one of the reasons that I, I enjoy talking to Scott so much is we think very similarly, but we do think different on some things. But we kind of have the same dynasty mind, and Scott has been talking about this forever, forever. And you and I have been talking about it forever. Listen, man, if I'm going to trade within the same tier, like, and once you get down to a certain point, the tiers become massive where I go like, I can see this dude scoring this much. I can also see this dude. I can see a scenario where this guy's okay. And and even if I separate them, Adam, like say it's like on our rankings, it's, it's tier six and tier seven running backs. Is there much of a difference between a tier six and a tier seven running back? No. I just found something arbitrary where I go like, okay, I think this guy is maybe in a slight a slightly above him tier. But anytime I can make these moves in any league, any format where I take trade in very similar tiers, or let's just say it's one big massive tier, I can trade a player for a player at the exact same position and get any type of plus, any type of plus, let alone a second, right? I'm talking, I'm thinking like maybe I get some fab, maybe I get a third. Maybe I get a fourth. I can package a couple fourths and maybe move my third round pick in the rookie draft up from the 306 to the 302. Something like that where right. I can just overpay and go like I actually get a, a plus warp player or or I get a chance at least getting a guy that I want that I thought fell too much. Right. I do it 100 times out of 100. And right. this is why I say he absolutely killed this move because when I look at it, we can debate – Chuba or Damian Harris, and you said it perfectly. Like, is there a scenario where Damian Damian Harris outscores Chuba Hubbard a hundred percent? But is there also a scenario where Damian Harris doesn't do anything and Chuba Hubbard scores more? Yeah. Is there also a scenario where they're equally in uh, uh, devalued? Point and, points and per game, nothings? they're like a point away in in irrelevant range. Absolutely. And, and who cares? Right. Is there a scenario where they're both uh, in that tier of who gives a shit? Yeah. Line up start 10? And, and, yeah. At the end of the day, one person in this deal is walking away with the 25 second. And I know it's out there. I know it's out there. But it's still a second round pick. And it's still something extra. And that's all that really matters to me. That's why I think Anto Hancho killed this one. Killed this one. Same tier. Even if it's a close tier, you got a second. Even if it's in 25 that's more than most of us can hope for. Like if I were to do this deal in my league, say I have Damian Harris, and I probably have a ton of Damian Harris, and I'm not even a big Chuba Hubbard fan, but if I can make this and you give me anything on top, anything, Adam, and I mean anything, a fifth round pick, I go, that's a win. That's a fifth more than I had last week, <laughs> and I basically got the same dude. I'm in, 100%. Love it. Yeah, Um I'm not going to pretend I have something extra to say. Like, uh, we'll, we'll move <laughs> Sorry, on. Still no, 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 no. I mean, it's just, it's not worth going into, you know, nauseam over. Okay. So OT, OTG. Yeah, neither, um, neither one of those dudes are making the thumbnail. <laughs> Let's just be clear. Ever. Period. Like, there's no scenario. No. I'm um, it's not happening. So, uh, Ortiz the God, OTG, uh, new patron for uh, patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. If you want your deals featured on the show, the last two are new patrons. And Fat Pat 1251, Mike, all right? I see he's got his vitamin C and his vodka going on down there, so we're, we're in good hands. Keenan Allen, Mike, in the 105. This is a 10-team Superflex lineup start nine with boosted quarterback scoring. Um, key to make that, that caveat because... Ortiz the God, OTG, is receiving the 309, 
but he's also receiving 102, which is already already made as uh, Anthony Richardson. So 102 or A Rich in 309 or 105, Jackson Smith and Jigba and Keenan Allen. 10 team Superflex lineup start nine, boost to quarterback scoring. Mike, what do you say, man? Because I think this is a, this is a tough one to talk about in grade personally for me. It is. It is. All right. So first part, you have a ten team super flex, which we haven't acknowledged any ten team super flex. I don't play in them, but the the quarterback scarcity just isn't isn't quite there. Like if you think about right. it, if everybody in your your ten team league has three quarterbacks, that's only thirty starters in mm-hmm. the NFL. There's thirty two starters. There's thirty two teams. I'm not breaking any news here. I hope people can do simple math with me. I know I've been drinking a lot of vodka, but there's the scarcity just isn't there. So if I were to tell you right now, Jameer Gibbs or JSN in a 10-team league in a rookie pick, you would you would go like, okay, these dudes are probably close, even. I don't know if you and I would go like, I, I think we'd probably put the Anthony Richardson in the conversation in a 10 team league, but it does open up the fact where you go, maybe it's Gibbs or maybe it's Jason, right? Like I can sure. see a scenario where, where that's the conversation. And if somebody posted in our discord, Hey, in my 10 team super flex league, I took Jason at 102. I wouldn't go, Oh, you're crazy. You I understand so, the right. dynamics. I understand the dynamics of the league, but when you bring it in where it's boosted quarterback scoring, and that could be anything, Adam. Like these guys could be scoring 30, 35 points a game. I have leagues that I have made where you have seen the quarterback scoring is like ridiculous. Stupidity. It is it is ridiculous. Everybody else is 150 to 200 points higher than skill players. Like just outright. Right. Like if the first 12 picks in that startup aren't quarterbacks, we're laughing. Let me me just say, I think. What are you doing? Let me just say, I think, to to give it um, quantitative thoughts, I think what it is was 20 points, or I'm sorry, 20 yards for a passing versus 25, right? Five five less, yeah. Yep. And then also, uh, I think it's boosted points per carry, and then I think it is also six point per passing touchdown. So it's it's not like to egregious lengths like sometimes we do, but basically it doesn't matter if you run, you pass, how you score – you're going to be better because of scoring and throwing and rushing. So like, that's what the boost is. It's, it, it's going to give you enough, but it's not like, holy shit, these quarterbacks just destroy everything that is in their way. The other thing I would say too, is, is the case for Anthony Richardson in a 10 team super flex is he does have one of those crazy, yes. ridiculous, like yes. break the lead type that's a, ceilings. That's a hundred percent. The he, thing he I was going to talk about too, by the way, he does. And I think I he think, has one of those ceilings where, like, even in a ten team league, if I played in him, if as long as it's a super flex league, I'm, I'm literally sitting there at the one hundred two, going like, yeah, if you leave me, Anthony Richardson, I'm going to shoot I'm gonna my shot him. on yep. him because I, I think he has that ability just to screw everybody over. As Agreed. much as I love Gibbs, or as much as I like JSN, I'm, I'm still thinking that's probably the pick. Agree. Now you give me boosted scoring on top of it. It's it's no question for me. I want Anthony Richardson at the one hundred two. JSN is fine. Um, like, and I think it's a reasonable pick. The fact that somebody got him at one hundred five is actually pretty impressive. Like, who the hell else? Who the hell else was looking at it going like the scoring must be pretty good? It's it's for the boost, quarterback position. Can I say so yes? It's you, boosted enough <laughs> to where right. J, JSN went behind one more quarterback. I imagine it's uh, Bryce, but. It, at least one more quarterback, and some people may have taken both of them, and then oh, Gibbs stop. is the one hundred six. Ten right? team, so ten team. Hey, let me just say, if ten team Gibbs is at one hundred six, I'm I'm ready to break right. a camera. I'm ready to break something right. because y'all are tripping on Gibbs at this. So point. let's but. just say, if this was a normal ten team super flex league, I look at it and I go the one hundred two and the one hundred five. Being that it was JSN, I think they're pretty even. I really don't care which way you wanted to go. But I would take the Keenan Allen side over the 309 in the start nine. Like, I, I don't mm-hmm. think Keenan Allen's dead, and I clearly want him over the 309. Now, I don't know how many times I would start him, but it would at least be a handful of times per year because he's still a pretty damn good wide receiver tied to Justin Herbert in a good offense. But you put in boosted quarterback scoring, and I know the fact that it's Anthony Richardson is at the 102. I want that side. I want that side, and I don't really care about the Keenan Allen part. The fact he got a third back is the impressive part. <laughs> like, I'm going to need something back, man. Just give me anything back. 
Uh, you're getting Keenan Allen and JSN. I'm going to need something back. The fact he pulled that part off is what's really impressive on the trade for me. I agree. I, I, I like his side. I think that um, I think that A. Rich offers in this format like incredible high upside. But I will say, like, if you told me you were going to take the other side, like, you're basically telling me that you already in a league like this have your quarterback secured. And you're like, you know what? Like, I got Kyler Murray. I have Dak Prescott and I have Lamar. I don't, I don't need a rich and I'll take my shot on JSN. I maybe even can move him for more. And then I'll take Keenan Allen, the, the off chance that he's a flex in a lineup start nine. Right. Like, like I think that's the scenario right. where I take the other side, but I think more often than not, I would rather shoot my shot on crazy upside in a boosted format here than I would like the duo of wide receivers in it. It's not a, not to hate on JSN, but like I, the same talk we had with Drake London, I kind of worry with JSN in a 10 team league, right? Like in a 10 team league, start nine, like think about, really consolidating down further and saying like you need difference makers in your lineup at all positions and JSN for me, I love him. Would he, would he be, would I be shocked if he's a points per game difference maker in his second year? No, but like rookie year, like we saw what Garrett Wilson was. We saw what Chris lot, like, is he going to be a difference maker with Lockett and with DK with their three tight end system? Double, Running backs, I, I, I have a hard time believing like he matters this year. So if I have to forego that to get elite quarterback production and a boosted quarterback scoring, I'm in. So that's that's kind of the way I view it. So um, let us know, man. This is also another 10-team league, which we're not necessarily the highest. No, uh, no, no. I just I love the fact that people play in all kinds of leagues. Like I've got eight, like eight, 18 questions, like 18 starts, seven. And I got to think about how the hell I would value it. I don't play in them. And Adam, you don't play in them. I get it though, man. You got home leagues. You got some original dynasty leagues where we were just scraping the bottom of the barrel just to get enough people to make a league because we love dynasty that much. So I appreciate that one. I'm but in. I'm in. If you really want to get into some 12 team leagues, man, patreon.com for South South Harmon, best place to be, man. Even if it isn't you or I starting up a league, we got patrons in there all the time starting up leagues and I can guarantee you they're they're 12 team leagues. We got enough they people are. there to to get a full 12 people. We even have those degenerates who are going like, yeah, we're going to make a a 20 team super flex league like <laughs> whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like hard Let's pass go. for me. Let's go. <laughs> We've gone to the opposite end of the spectrum, but come on. Come check us out, man. We get you in some 12 team leagues where our knowledge base is actually probably a lot better than trying to figure out 10 team and 8 team and I, whatever I, I, team. I like that though because, like, format wise, it, it was tricky. But uh, that Make was a new think. patron who's already in the patreon.com forward slash South Harmon Mike. So we're going to get him in the league. Speaking of which, Shockwave360. Um, I was on the beach when this came through as the uh, the username on Discord and in Sleeper. Really happy to have him here. So we got K. Dotton again, Mike. This time he's receiving. So. Curious your thoughts here. All right, so 12-team Superflex, start nine, one quarterback. Like the one quarterback for me in this one makes it really tricky. Here's what we're looking at. Kate Otten in the 308 and the 103 is being received by Shockwave360, new patron. He is sending to I'm Wingate the 105, the 201, the 209. Mike, what do you think, man? Like – here, here's the way I look at this, right? The 103 this, to me is so key because it's JSN or Gibbs. Like, I'm, I know that factually. 105 is a big drop off because it's either QJ or Addison or Flowers. 201, 209, so, we're talking like dart throw range, running backs, which I'm not saying I hate, but it's a big difference from 103. So, what do you got, man? Listen, man, this is going to be two plugs in the matter of like five minutes, but. SouthHarmonFF.com, Koopa integrated the ADP that him and Tom built. That's a free tool. You don't have to sign up. You just go to the website. You can see it. You can sort. I pull up 
I pull up one QB rookie drafts just to get an idea ADP because there, there you go, there you go. Like I can do it in my head, but JSN is the one hundred three. Adam, JSN is the one hundred three. But I, I, I get your point. Like I think there'll probably be a, a, a good handful of leagues where it's it's Gibbs or JSN. Like somebody may take JSN at two, which we talked about on the trade just a little bit ago. <clears throat> but one hundred three. Let's just say it is Jackson Smith and Jigba. We'll just plug it in. He's getting JSN. Uh, Kate Otten, okay. Uh, the 308 is Deuce Vaughn in a 1QB league. Okay, whatever. Start yeah, whatever. Nine. Right. You're, it's a running back. <laughs> it's, it's whatever. But the 105, QJ, that's the 105, Adam. The 201, this is where I could do the math in my head to five, right? I got enough fingers on one hand. I can count to five and kind of get an idea right. of who the wide receiver is. The right. 201, as I'm going, like, who the hell is available in a 1QB league? Who the hell would go at the 201? I know who goes at 201 in a super flex league, but the 201 in a 1QB start nine league is Bryce Young. So it is a quarterback. Mm. Okay, let's say it's not a quarterback. It could be Jonathan Mingo. He goes at the 112. Michael Mayer goes at the 202, oh. and Rasheed Rice goes at the 203. So that is the tier of players we're talking about. We see the 201, and in our super flex brains, we know exactly who it is, and we think like, oh, True. man, it could be a Fair. pretty good player. In Fair. a 1QB league, not not as good. Okay, Fair. The Fair. 209, <laughs> Tajay Spears, or Sam Laporta, Jaden Reed, maybe Tank Bigsby, Marvin Mims. That's kind of the range you're going at. Now – Telling you all that, Adam, and actually seeing it in person, I think whatever the hell he sent with the 105. So if I just think it's QJ, it's it's Addison, it's it's Zay Flowers, whoever that wide receiver may be that that person takes at the 105. Sure. All that other stuff, the 201, the 209, is well worth it in a start nine for me to get up to Gibbs or JSN. And Correct. I'm not even the biggest JSN fan. I'm a huge Gibbs fan, but I'm not even a JSN fan. But we have talked about it sure. on the show. There's a reason he was a thumbnail is the fact the community loves him. And right. you have talked about it ad nauseum. Even if he has a so-so year, the fact he's the clear, clear wide receiver one of this class, yes. the fact that people have valued him where he is, even if he has a so-so year, that is going to carry through. We saw a Drake London trade. Drake London didn't have that great of year, but we talk ourselves into certain key metrics. But right. the fact he was wide receiver one had a, heading into last, last year's year. rookie draft right. still sticks. Still sticks. He's a different cat than the other wide receivers who were farther down, right? If Jahan Dotson didn't do shit his rookie year, no one cares about Jahan Dotson. He is <laughs> right. dead. Right. Dead. Right. D E D dead. But Drake London, <laughs> very different story. Very totally. different story. So totally. I'm going to apply the same kind of logic I am to if you can get me into that tier of a guy that even if he fails, people still going to love him. Or even if he's just average, which is very likely, that's the dude I want. So if I just look at it as JSN, I want it. And, and Adam, don't even get me started on the fact that if somebody took JSN at 102 and I fell into Ramir Gibbs at 103, I would be over the moon. You can have 105. You can have the 201. You can have the 209. Best of luck to you. Thanks for the free Kate Otten and whoever the hell the 308 is. Well, let me just say this, too, in one quarterback league. And, and this is a – I'm imagining non-tight end premium, but I don't actually know that's the case. But – I'm looking at Kate Otten, and it just it's it sticks out to me, Mike, as the 308, right? So when I look at one quarterback, and I've I've let me just admit this to everybody watching. I don't play in one quarterback. I'll never play in one quarterback. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I'm the savant at one quarterback. All right. But I will tell you I give enough advice and I I have my DMs are flooded enough with one quarterback and how to address it that I basically play in it, I just don't Pay buying fees, if that makes any sense to you. Like we can, we can never win money off our one quarterback right. advice. But I've also, ever. I've also ha- helped we people win. I have helped people win one quarterback leagues, and <laughs> it's on the back of trades like this. And I think here's the big thing, right? So, two hundred one, two hundred nine. Like you're gonna start getting into ranges where, like in in these formats, people are gonna shoot their shots. They're probably unless they need a quarterback or they're like they don't know anything about the 
the uh, skill players behind, they take Bryce. But when you look at 209, Mike, I think this is the big thing. Like 209 and 308. Okay, so at 209, you might be able to get one of these running backs that people think, all right, like one quarterback, go ahead and give me Roshan or something like that, right? Okay, sure. I like Roshan. But at 308, you discount it so far. Like I have seen in this range, like you talked about likely, like what's likely going to happen, Isaiah likely. Kate Otten. Like I'm looking at that <laughs> and I'm thinking about playing that up over and over and letting you do what you want to with 201 and 209, which like let's talk about Roshan for a second. Like I know a lot of people love him. You love Khalil Herbert. You love the situation. Like running – I like them too. I have plenty of shares. But in this format, I don't care versus what – like, let's just admit this. JSN and Gibbs trade for in this format in the top 30. The other assets here don't. Easily. They don't. And and I think in one quarterback, you have to understand how different that is and how detrimental it is to try to figure out what those pieces outside of the top 30 mean in a start nine league, right? And, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you 308 and Kate Otten or something to be, you know, riding to the bank about, but like you can find a window to just sell out of those for another third or another second or something. 103 is the prize piece. And in one quarterback start nine, I don't really care. Like, I don't really care. I'm in this format, Mike, I'm going to up tier to the moon um, I kind of forgo my principles in normal leagues that we talk about because like, this is so much more different than that. So that anyway, that's where I'm at. Um, shockwave. I think you, uh, sent some waves through your league. So let us know what the league thought of it. Everyone watching, let us well, know what you it. thought of it. But I, for, for me, I want, I want the one on three side. Just to, to kind of talk about it, too, like we don't play in these leagues, but we have a lot of tools. We have a lot of knowledge. We talk about them a lot. And I try to put myself in the mindset of what exactly would I do if I was in this league? And, and there's some things that, that confirm exactly how I would be approaching it, right? Not player names. I'm also just looking at value. You talk about Gibbs. That's a back end second round pick of a startup a startup that's a mm-hmm. background second round pick jsn wide receiver that's a mid to late third round startup pick in a one qb league based on adp we talk about guys like qj jordan addison right just those couple spots two spots in your rookie drafts we're talking about the 412 and the 501 right adam we're talking big a full difference round, big difference. A full round or two rounds and i think about it in a super flex league like what is the price i would pay to move up a couple rounds in a super flex league especially a start nine one that is very shallow and it definitely is whatever the hell these guys are going like you can talk about rasheed rice right that was one of the names i mentioned that's a ninth round pick in a one qb league in a super flex league that's a dude that's in the 12th would I pay a ninth round pick to move up a couple spots and to start nine in a yes. super flex league? Yes. A hundred percent. Thousand ya. times out of a thousand. Gone. Right. Bye. Bye. Right. So if I take some of my super flex principles and I put them into one QB, just how I think about ADP, how I think about values, how I think about format and how the league is set up, it's a smash. It's a smash. Right. I may not play in them, but that is exactly what I want to do because I think those are vastly different tiers that we're talking about. Those are vastly different outcomes of value. If if Quentin Johnson or Jordan Addison fail, they only get four, five hundred yards year one, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody gives a crap. I don't care how much we talk them up or how much we like them right now. Sky more. Nobody cares come next year, right? JSN is just on that different level. Jameer Gibbs is just on that different level. We're going to be talking ourselves into the fact like you see their draft capital, you see their prospect profile, you see this. We're going to have all these bullet points to back them up. And even if if you look at it and you go, I don't like them, I don't like what I saw, boom, you can move them, but it's still at value. It's still at a decent enough price where you can get out of them. Some of these other guys, oh, you try to do it, and somebody's like, "Yeah, I give you the the two oh six, like, yeah, what you said, Sky Moore, 
like in a super flex league, if somebody could give me the 205, the 204 for Sky Moore, I'd be over the moon. I'd be doing backflips. Thank God. Thank God I got out of them. Uh, that stuff doesn't happen for the other guys that we really love. Also, for the content side, uh, everybody watching, if you want your deals featured on this show, like the last two were, patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. A dollar a month gets you in the door. Um, there's a $5 a month tier. The Savage tier is sold out yet again. So um, if you want to get in there, go ahead and do it. But there, there's merch tiers if you want to go higher. Also, South Harmon ff.com is uh mike remember ab before he had the head trauma booming business is booming right right. and and the reason i say that is because the warp tool honestly like i'll say this the warp tool i think is going to be most beneficial for people in season but i think why everybody is seeing that it's so beneficial now if you're in a startup if you don't know enough about your leagues like if you're in a bunch of leagues, you can check out what is the reality of the last two, three, four seasons from your leagues. You can check out in a new startup. I don't really know what the warp looks like. Like I see the scoring. I want to know what positions to target and where. That is all off-season beneficial for you. So make sure you're checking that out as well. Um, the other thing I will ask, if you could, go down in the comments. Let us know. Mike and I are terrible. Um you know, I look awful. Mike looks awful. We're wh- whatever the case may be. Tell us we suck. Tell us our trade grades are awful. We want to hear it. If you uh, want to give a thumbs up for us, that would be appreciated as well. Outside of that, Mike, that's all I got for this week. Uh, we're back at home. We are back to the trade show twice a week. Mike, anything you got for me? No, the the website's a huge thing. The warp tool is absolutely fantastic. Big shout out to uh, Scott Connor. Big shout out to Eric Van Eck. Go check those guys out, man. They have done a, I didn't ask them to, but they've done a fantastic job of promoting our site just offhand. Scott is a big proponent of warp. That's kind of where the whole love for warp came from was listening to Scott. Right. So big shout out to those guys. Make sure you're checking them out. Those are our guys. Uh, we love everybody at Destination Devi, but specifically just this episode i want to shout those guys out those guys have been absolutely incredible go check out the website go check out what koopa has made that warp tool is fantastic you can also check out the merch i didn't wear it tonight uh big miss for me adam but i i am Why out not? there trying to i see i seen it came to the crib like come on man the, the problem is it came Friday and I got so excited. So, you know, I had to put it on and like wear it all day and Fair enough. record on Tuesday. Night Fair enough. And, Fair know, enough. That's, that's my bad. I, I dropped the ball on next that week, one, but next week, next I promise week. you next week I will, wear, I will wear that shirt. So I'm out there trying to make a funny fantasy football related shirts inappropriate. And if you just want something generic, we do have the ones with the South Harmon logo on it. So you can go check that out. The merch store is live as well as the warp tool. We just appreciate you guys tapping in. And even if you don't have the money to spend, that's completely fine because your support watching this video, hitting the like button, commenting, doing all the things that you guys do have propelled us to the levels that we're at. And I am absolutely floored every single day by the support we receive. So thank you very much. I appreciate you. I'm glad you put up with me. I am fighting a cold. I am fighting a whatever the hell this is that my six-year-old has given me. I, I think this I death think, sentence. I, I think powered through. I think Mike is fighting rookie fever, which um, like it this. Is, you're gonna see this a full week later. So that you're gonna be watching this on Wednesday evening. But uh, last week, um, you saw rookie fever catch our live stream, unfortunately, and uh, Mike's dealing with rookie fever, but. Outside of that, we do appreciate everybody tapping in. Uh, Like, comment, subscribe to the channel. um, Hit all those things up, what we said. Other than that, we will see you back here, same time, same place, next week, Wednesday evening, for the second edition of The Trade Show. We are out of this thing. Peace. Peace.